I'm Carol Dweck. I'm a professor of psychology at Stanford, and I study people's mindsets, their beliefs about whether their fundamental characteristics are just carved in stone or are things they can develop. Well, let me tell you a little about the two mindsets. When people are in a fixed mindset, they believe that their basic qualities, their intelligence, talents, abilities, are just fixed traits. They're carved in stone, and that's it. But when people are in more of a growth mindset, they believe these qualities can be developed through effort, um, perseverance, good strategies, lots of great input from others. It's not that they don't believe in ability or they think everyone's the same. Uh, it's not that they think there's no such thing as talent, but they believe these talents and abilities can be developed. These mindsets are really fundamental beliefs about human attributes, whether we're just dealt uh, hand of cards, or whether we have a say in how those attributes develop. They function by creating a whole psychological world for people. In a fixed mindset, your psychological world is about validating your abilities over and over. Don't take on anything hard. You might make mistakes and not look smart. When you're trying hard at something, you don't feel good. You feel like your ability is being judged. If I were really smart, I wouldn't have to work this hard. Look, they're not working so hard. And you think that setbacks, failures measure you, measure your si fixed abilities. So you feel, I'm no good at this. I shouldn't do it. I'll hide my scores from other people. It's a mindset built around fear of being invalidated, fear of being seen as incompetent. But in a growth mindset, the framework is ar around learning. I want hard things. That's how I grow my abilities. I want to work hard. That's how I grow my abilities. Setbacks, not always pleasant, but they always teach you something about how to go forward more effectively. Two completely different psychological worlds. But I want to make extremely clear, we all live in both worlds. It's not that you're a fixed mindset person or a growth mindset person. We all have elements of both. And when you think about it, that makes sense because the world is always triggering us into fixed mindsets, evaluating, judging, criticizing. This can put us right back into a world of fixed traits that are being judged. Then we have to find our way back to a place of growth. We've been able to measure people's mindsets, students, say, facing a challenging transition. And then we look and see how well they fare over those challenging transitions. And we often find that students who endorse more of a growth mindset fare better. They have more wherewithal. They're more eager for the challenges. They're more resilient in the face of setbacks. They're willing to put in the effort that it takes, even though it's a very challenging time in their lives. We've also created interventions. First, we had more in-person programs, um, six or eight sessions in which students, usually adolescents, learned about a growth mindset, how your brain actually changes when you learn, how you can strengthen those connections and increase your intellectual abilities over time. They're shown how to put that into practice. And we and others have seen in a number of instances that this can stoke students' motivation and their learning over time. Since then, with Dave Paunescu and David Yeager, we've tried to create interventions that would scale up, interventions that could be delivered in one or two sessions via computer modules. 
uh, that could be distributed across the country. We're very interested in whether even these kind of small, modest interventions can increase the number of students who pursue STEM courses, graduate from high school, graduate STEM-worthy, go to college, maybe pursue STEM curricula there. There is so much more we need to learn about growth mindset and mindsets in general. First, the conditions under which a growth mindset will flourish or not. Next, where does it come from? We've studied things like um, positive and negative feedback, but we have so much more to learn about where it comes from and how it's sustained.